Never waste a good crisis. And when it comes to the economic crisis, don't waste it when it, it can have a very positive impact. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. The way we're going to win over the long term is not just militarily. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure, have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. Stay tuned for Politics and Religion. Ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens the latest development in the nation of Israel. Iran is offering to escort ships that want to run the blockade into Gaza. Supreme Leader Khamenei offers military protection for activists. Iran would be willing to send its Revolutionary Guard members to accompany further aid ships to Gaza, Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said on Sunday in an interview cited by Reuters. Now, make sure you understand what's going on here. According to international law, Israel has the right to blockade its enemies. Now, in particular, Hamas has been uh, importing bombs, rockets, other weapons to be used against the nation of Israel. And it's not as though they have not used them for the last eight years. They've fired something like 8,500 rockets into southern Israel, uh, killing some people, disrupting life. They're making some of their cities almost uninhabitable. Well, with the Gazan operation against this, they have pretty well stopped most of the rockets for now. But it's no secret that Hamas wants to rearm and prepare for the next round. Now, not only is Hamas rearming, but according to all reports, Hezbollah in the north, that includes Lebanon, has been rearmed to the teeth by Syria. I read an article today, it may, may be as high as 10 thousand rockets are aimed at Tel Aviv, at Haifa, at major Israeli cities. And so Israel is finding herself now surrounded on the north by Hezbollah, on the south by Hamas. And now the international community is criticizing Israel because she is maintaining a blockade. Now they say that people are starving in Gaza, but zero proof. There are actually Palestinians who are testifying there's no starvation whatsoever in Gaza. However, Hamas wants the blockade broken because they want the ability to bring weapons in. Now remember, Hamas is that entity that has steadfastly refused to recognize Israel's right to exist. So Israel has a blockade. Recently, different ships have decided they would run the blockade. Israel said, look, you come right here to Ashdod, we will inspect your cargo, and then we will take your cargo down to Gaza and let the Gazan people have it. Well, the people said, no, that's not right. We're not willing to do that. Israel even said, you can go along. We can take you in observers. You're welcome to see that 100% of your cargo will be given to the people of Gaza, except we're not going to allow any explosive, any arms, any weapons to get through. Well, of course, the enemies of Israel don't want this to happen. So the media is absolutely filled with all kinds of charges and counter charges that the people of Gaza are starving to death, that they are being abused. But the truth of the matter is international law allows Israel to blockade her enemy when she has to do it in the interest of self-defense. The article goes on to say the naval wing of the Revolutionary Guard is ready to assist the peace flotilla. That's what they're calling it, even though they're uh, wanting to be able to break the blockade to enable Hamas to wage war. The peace flotilla to Gaza with all its effort and capabilities Khomeini's Revolutionary Guard spokesman Ali Shirazi stated, if the Supreme Leader issues an order for this, then Revolutionary Guard naval forces will do their best to secure the ships, Shirazi said. 
It is Iran's duty to defend the innocent people of Gaza. We're talking about those innocent people that lobbed 8,500 rockets into southern Israel. Remember, Israel withdrew in 2005 of its own volition. It wanted to make a goodwill gesture. It was saying to the Gazan people, we do not want to rule you. And so they withdrew they actually carried out 9,000 Israelis against their will, homes they had lived in for 40, 50, 50 years. They pulled them out. Israel thought that the Palestinians would take this as a gesture of goodwill. Instead, the Palestinians took it as a sign of weakness, and they immediately moved their rockets forward and began to land more and more of them in the southern Israel. Now, that's what led up to this, and that's the story you may not be he- hearing on your media right now. But that is what's going on. Now, Iran says she's going to get involved. Is this World War III? According to reports emanating from Kampala, Uganda, the Obama administration is on the brink of signing America to the International Criminal Court Statute of Rome. This would literally spell the end of the sovereignty of the United States. It would acknowledge the right of a world court to place the U.S. on trial. We'll explain today on politics and religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Okay, the lines are drawn real clear. It's between those who want to preserve on this side the sovereignty of the United States of America and those who believe the age of internationalism has come, that there should be another level of government above the United States government, that there should be a world legislator, a world ruler, and a world court system that you won't only appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, but you actually have the option beyond that of appealing to 